Okay, so here is the book I'm going to read today. You might recognize it. It is by Dr. Seuss. It is called The Lorax. It's also a movie. You might have seen the movie. Yeah, good. All right, so The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Here we go. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and birds, no birds ever sing excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. So he is not on this page. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunzler still lives there. Ask him. He knows. The Wunzler knows about the Lorax. He's going to tell the story of the Lorax. You won't see the Wunzler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum at the top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of mishuffered moose. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. Right there, Those, that's the one for Yeah, but kind of Yeah. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather's snail. Then he pulls up the pail and makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hole in his grubulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper, my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. No. Well, he has a little bit of that he has on. Slup! Down slaps the whisper phone to your ear, and the old Wunzler's whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through the snurgly hose. And he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. So now he's going to tell the story of the Lorax. Ooh, look at that. Bright and colorful. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swami swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. So these colorful things here, those are called truffle trees. Aren't they beautiful? And under the trees, I saw the brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle fruits. 
From the ripple, rippleless pond came a comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. I wonder what he's gonna do. Any, any predictions what he's gonna do? He's gonna knock down the trees, you think? Cut down the trees? In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a triple tree with one chop. You were right. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a knead. He's making a sneed. Let's see. The instant I'd finished, I heard a bazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Who do you think this is? Who do you think this is? The Laura. Mister, he said with a snot, sawdusty sneeze, I am the Laura. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you made out of my truffle or tuft? Is the Lorex happy? No. Look, Lorex, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed's a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. It has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. No one would buy that, right? Let's find out if anyone's going to buy it. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought about that need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for $3.98. And I laughed at the Lorax. You poor silly guy, you never can tell what some people will buy. <laughs> yep, someone bought it. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I am busy, I told him, go away if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. That's so that He's calling his family and telling his family to come. What do you think they're gonna do? Oh boy. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Oh no, they're cutting down all the truffle trees. Yeah. Oh, look at that. 
Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four triple trees at one smacker. We were making sneeds four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. Do you think it's good for the earth for all these trees to be cut down? But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloops who played in the shade of, in their barbaloop suits and, and li happily lived eating truffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to go around. And my poor barbaloops are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Look at the poor barbaloops. They're losing all their food because of all the trees being chopped down. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. Um, well, right now the barber looks are going. I meant no harm, I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of cities that I shipped out. I was shipping from, from them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Does it still look beautiful here? I don't think so. All the trees are gone. Almost all of the trees are gone. The barbaloops had to leave. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whipped. He sneezed and he snuffled, he snarkled, he sniffed. Onceler, he cried with a cruffulous croak. Onceler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. Oh, now he's making the air dirty and the swans can't sing anymore. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. <laughs> they cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. Yeah, all that dirty stuff in the air from his factory is hurting them. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup, also schloppity schlop. What do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty, dirty onceler man, you. He, so he's got all this gross goo stuff from his factory and oh look it's going into the pond oh you're glupping the pond where the hummingfish hummed no more can they hum for their gills are all gum so i'm sending them off oh their future is dreary they'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. So now the trees are gone, the air is dirty, and the water is very dirty. Ooh.
Yeah, it looks really bad. It's kind of brownish green. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. But I have my rights, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on figuring and figuring and figuring and figuring. Turning more to fill the trees and the sneeze, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. Oh boy. Is that going to be good for the earth? No. No. The what? Well, the air is not good already, and now he wants to make more and more and more sneeze out of truffle trees. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From the outside in the fields came a sickening snap of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle tree of them all. The last one. Oh no. Oh. No more trees, no more sneeze, no more work to be done. And so, in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smuggered sky. Now, all that was left me, the bad smelling sky, was my big empty factory the Lorax and I. Because all the trees are gone and the air is dirty and the water is dirty and all the animals had to leave. Look at how, remember how pretty it was at the beginning? How nice the earth looked? Look at that. It used to be like this. And now it looks like this. Oh. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backwards glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. But it, I we're almost to the end. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was a long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. Now he's worried. He sees what happens when he chopped down all the trees. But now, says the Wensler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Oh, so he's telling the, the person, you have to help. You have to care about the earth and you have to help to make it better. So, catch, calls the Wensler, and he lets something fall. It's a truffle of seed, the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle of seeds, and truffle of trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. So what does he have to do? He has to plant the seed to grow more truffle trees. Oh, that's the end. So do you think he's gonna do it? Yeah. Yeah, he hopefully he'll he'll take care of the earth more this time, right? Plant some truffle trees and get them to grow again. Yes, and hopefully they'll look good again, right? 
Yeah, if we take care of the earth, it can look beautiful like that. But what if we what if we threw garbage on the ground and chopped down all the trees and would the earth be beautiful then? No. No, it's our responsibility and our job to help take care of the earth and treat it treat it well and take care of it, right? All right, thanks for listening.